Composer's Voice presents 15 Minutes of Fame, 15 one-minute works written for a specific musician. This 15 Minutes of Fame features cellist Craig Holtgren with the theme Occupy Cello.
Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what brought you to write for uh, 15 minutes of fame? Um, I, I, I mean, the, 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 the big thing that just like caught my eye was Craig and, and I've, I actually met Craig about 15 or so years ago before the, before the call happened. And I just knew, Oh my goodness, I got a chance I can write for Craig. So you can't, you can't pass that. You can't pass that opportunity up to write something for Craig. Cause you can do anything you want and he'll probably find a way to do it. A anyway, I'm, I'm down here. Um, I live out uh, a little North of Atlanta. Um, I teach, uh, composition theory and whatever they want me to at the university of North Georgia. So, uh, that's pretty much the, the gist of my life. Tell us a little bit about your piece. It's just, uh, a couple of lines from Shakespeare, Midsummer Night's Dream. And, um, I just want to come up with clever ways that I could have the cello do some narration. So, um, I don't know what, what he's uh, come up with for this particular performance, but the past performances, he'd usually actually pick up the cello and, and kind of sing into it. Well, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, you and where you're located and what you do? Well, uh, I'm a composer and occasional teacher uh, based in the greater Milwaukee metropolitan area. Um, work as a uh, church musician um, uh, and I've been on the boards for various professional organizations over the years. 
Yeah, uh, I compose. I perform. When I saw this call, it was right after having seen uh, the movie Metropolis, and somehow it all the the whole Occupy thing tied in in my mind to um, Metropolis, and this piece popped out. <laughs> Hello. Hey, hey this, yeah, I'm very fine. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. Greetings from sunny California. Why don't you tell us a little bit about you and um, why you wrote for this 15 minutes of fame? Uh, well, I'm a composer and percussionist, and uh, I actually just retired from a long career as a, a college professor in the East. I was teaching in uh, Pennsylvania, Mueller College in uh, Allentown for about 30 years and retired and we moved back to california which has always been my plan i'm actually no longer in retirement i'm a, a lecturer at cal state monterey bay so uh, uh it's one of those things you like pull you back in about why i wrote for this it was kind of interesting i 
first of all, I just want to say it's really it's a joy to be on this, especially the the fantastic sonic contours I'm hearing and Craig's playing. I uh, knew uh, of Craig for a long time before the call, just by reputation. And we actually were on a we were on a festival together about ten years before this at Rollins College in Florida. I'm sure uh, Craig will re remember the Rollins College thing. And uh, what is it? Luna Nova was doing a, a lot of pieces, and I I just thought, you know, what a what a fantastic player. I some somebody said earlier, uh, you know, you you see and hear certain players play and know if I got to write for that person, I could do literally whatever I could imagine and, and <laughs> beyond what I could imagine. And this person will, uh, will find a way to do it maybe better than I thought. So this, that part of it was there. And also I knew of 15, uh, uh, 15 minutes of fame. I'd been watching the calls. A lot of times there are ones that, you know, when they would come up, I might be up to my neck in another project, but I was certainly very aware of it. So when this came up, that it was Craig and it was 15 minutes of fame. And also, I, uh, I, I'm i sure it's, it's clear, I was also attracted to the title, Occupy Cello. Right. Because I kind of embraced that, uh, uh, the political aspect of it. I've, I've, uh, I've been something of a political animal a lot of my life. Uh, especially my pre-composer life. But um, so all of these things kind of came together uh, for me, and I was just uh, excited to dive in. Uh, I think my piece was another one of those pieces that uh, um, happened pretty rapidly. I, I, I know it was in between some uh, two much, much longer pieces, orchestra pieces and things. Uh, so it was, uh, it was fun to do that process of rewiring my composer brain to try to imagine how to write essentially this haiku, this little, uh, right. in my case, something of a, uh, you know, political haiku. Uh, haikus sometimes are political. Um, uh, but that, that was a, that was a great joy to both try to figure out how to do something uh, interesting within a minute. But the other, I, I wanted to mention one thing because uh, uh, since you, you know, are bringing this back and, and, and thinking about the piece, it was quite a bit of fun for me to think about one aspect that's different in the case of my piece, and that's sort of the danger of writing a topical piece. <laughs> because when I wrote my piece, the initial, uh, the original title was Mitt's Lament uh, or Carried Interest. And it, it ended up getting called Carried Interest a little bit more often. But uh, at the risk of getting maybe a little political, uh, I wrote it in a time where, in my mind, Mitt Romney was the worst human possible ever. And of course, today, given the, the events of the last year, Mitt Romney is a personal hero of mine. Uh, so, but I still like the piece in the sense of some, you know, sort of having this thing to say about a certain way of thinking about living in a political world and my one's relationship to a political world. Uh, so all of that still holds, but it, it, it cracked me up. I actually tell people that I wrote this piece back in olden times when Mitt Romney was a bad person.